Hi everyone, this is video four of the Knitted Sloth Knit Along. And uh, if you've stayed up with me, you have two legs made and two arms made, and now we're ready to start the body. So this whole video is pretty much going to be about the body and knitting in those arms and legs when we get there. So we are to start out with the standard body, uh, is what the sloth uh, instruction tells us to. And so that's on page 12. Um, and there are several ways I have tried with making the body. I've uh, started out, uh, I've actually done one totally knitting it in the flat. Then my favorite way, of course, you can guess by now is knitting in the round. But I've actually found that when I start the body out, I do the first few rows flat and then I go to knitting in the round and I'm gonna show you that. Uh, the reason for that is I find that if I start out with my very first row and connect it and just knit in the round, the bottom gets a little bit too, too rounded and they don't want to sit as well. And I find that if I knit a few rows flat, I don't know why this works, probably because my tension is a little more relaxed than if I was knitting in the round uh, in that little, little space connecting it. Um, I just find that that bottom stays a little flatter and I'm just happier with it. So we're going to get our stitches uh, cast onto my needle and uh, we're to cast on eight stitches and I do a cast on by knitting it on. Now you can do long tail or I have just gotten into the habit of knitting on and for most things I really like it because they don't have to <laughs> figure out now how long of a tail do I need? Well with eight stitches that's no big no big deal but if you were knitting on or casting on excuse me for like a sweater or something that you needed a couple hundred stitches this cast on works really really well so i just uh, do a slip knot and then slip my needle in my first stitch and may pull it through i've now have that stitch on my right hand needle and i'm going to transfer it over here to my left hand needle and that's two stitches so i'm going to keep doing that until i have eight stitches on my left hand needle so you don't even have to take it uh, off of the left needle and put it onto the right you can just well i'll do that slow again so that's three stitches pull my loop through there it is on my right needle and I'm putting it over there on my left and when I do I just leave my right hand needle inside that stitch because that's the stitch we're going to use to knit through to make another stitch so now we are at four five six seven, eight. So there are my eight stitches. And like I said, I've actually connected these and started knitting in the round. But because it is such a small little uh, space, I think one's gauge, my gauge especially, just got tight enough that it was hard to get a nice flat bottom. It just wanted to be a little too cut. So our very first row, it says to purl. And normally, um, you know, if I'm in the round, everything is a knit row for me. But I'm, since I'm actually doing the first few rows in the flat, I'm going to purl that first row. So we're just gonna purl across those eight stitches. I can hear my puppy dogs barking and I think my husband got onto the telephone so excuse me for the distractions that you might <laughs> be hearing on, in the background and um, we'll just continue to purl across those eight stitches. This is pretty simple. I'm going to walk us through just a few rows. 
Uh, and when we get up to that row that says purl 10, which is row 17, or knit 10, excuse me, uh, that row 17 is where I'm actually going to knit the legs on. So I'm not going to, you know, have you sit here and watch me uh, do all of this, but I am going to do a couple rows until I switch it over to a, I'm, whoops, slipped that off, didn't I? So where I'm knitting in the round, let me see how many stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, that was my eight, that's why it slipped off, because my tension got loose. Okay, so that's my purl row, so that is actually row one, and now we're going to uh, do the next row which is row two and it's a knit one make one and we're going to do that all the way across uh, all of these eight stitches and i'm going to do this make one just like i was doing the make one on the arms and the legs by knitting into the daughter stitch so here's our knit one make one i'm going to pick up that leg which is kind it's laying sideways because it's a purl stitch it's not laying just like it was a uh, if that had been a knit stitch there but this is the daughter and it's kind of laying sideways so I'm going to slip that right up on to my needle and this is my make one so I'm going to actually um, uh, knit knit into that I wanted to make sure I wasn't on remind myself that I wasn't on the pearl side. So that's my make one. There's my uh, knit one. And this little stitch, this is so real folks, I'm not covering anything up here. <laughs> I slipped that stitch off and it shouldn't have been slipped off. Okay, so that's my knit one. So now I'm going to make one into the uh, daughter of that next stitch that's my make one and we're just going right straight across and you do not have to make your make ones like i am in the daughter you can knit into that uh, bar that's in between the two stitches um, you can knit into the front and back of the next stitch uh, where the make one needs to be. So you have options and that's that's totally up to you. Figure out, as I say often, what works for you and go with that. I just happen to use knitting into the leg of the daughter stitch. And uh, we just want to get these increases along all across this row and we're looking to make a, have a total of 15 stitches when we get across here and we're just almost there so um, if you've not knitted before you're if you're a new a new person to knitting um, try several different methods and don't be afraid if it doesn't work don't be afraid to take it out and try again don't feel like you're that's being defeated or going backwards if you have to take something out i think as as knitters we need to get used to being okay with taking a few rows out uh or maybe sometimes we have to take a lot of rows out so i'm going to count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so I missed getting a make one. I thought I probably did. No, nope, not on that one. Must be the next one back that I just went ahead and knitted and I didn't get the make one in there. Well, isn't that silly? So I'm gonna do it right here. That's important. And of course, and I say this so many times, when you're on video, it is a little, uh, you're, you're just thinking of so many things and not concentrating sometimes on the knitting like you should. So I appreciate everybody has been <laughs> encouraging me for uh, it all coming out correctly. So uh, that's, that's thank you for all of that. 
And like I said, in the end, we just need to end up with our 15 stitches. Lift that leg up. Can be a little tricky sometimes. And let's see. Our next row then is a purl row. So I'm actually going to do the purl. Always think about your tension and keeping everything snugged up like it's supposed to be. Yay, I love it when you count across and it's like, oh, okay, I am on track. I kind of forgot to do that when I started this row. Like I say, when I'm, when I'm thinking about the video and thinking about looking at the row pattern, <laughs> I can kind of forget where I'm at, but this is our 15 stitches and then we will be doing row four, doing increase again, and we will end up with 22 stitches. So there's our 15. There's my knit side. This is my purl side back here. And so now it is a knit to make one, and we're gonna do that all the way across. And I'm gonna do that row while I am on the video here with you because then I'm going to join it in the round. So it's the knit two. Get my gauge back here. And make one. Make one. That's my make one. We had another beautiful day in Portland, here in Oregon. I'm outside of Portland. I really don't live in Portland. Um, and um, it was like 89 degrees, which <laughs> that was quite a jump from the low 60s last week. So just so enjoyed today that transition between wet winter and spring. We're so ready for the sun. So it felt good. Okay, that was my make one. And what does it say? The last two stitches are down to being, oh, I have one more to knit. Okay, and then we will be at the place on row th uh, four. Um, actually, we'll be ready to do row five because that was row four. And so to do in the round, what would I do at this point in time to connect this in the round? I'm simply going to slip half of my stitches. I, it, um, I could go to three, re three needles right now if I wanted to. In fact, I think I'm going to because I, I had somebody ask the other day, well, how, how would you go to three needles? What would that look like? So I'm going to put a few stitches on my first needle, grab another needle, and I'm going to take half maybe of what's left here. And I could count this out and absolutely make sure that it was uh, split, you know, as evenly as one could make it all the way across. And so now we've got 
the stitches all on three needles. Here's my live yarn. So I'm going to make sure there's no twist in my work. Slip my needle down here to the end. Here's, here's my live arm, yarn right here coming off of this needle here. And so I want to start knitting onto this stitch right here. I don't do any, I don't knit two stitches together. I just start knitting and I make sure that my tension is pulled up and with these needles since the cable is a little bit uh, thinner around than the metal part of the needle I just snugged that stitch right up and now I'm going to take a fourth needle and that's the one I'm going to be working with so I have three needles with stitches and I just want to make sure that that stitch between the two needles there is has decent tension on it, not doesn't need to be overly tight. So now I'm just going to start knitting in the round and now I have I'll have no purl row. I will only have knit rows and at the end of all of this I will be coming back and I have just a couple of rows to sew up there and then this bottom to close. So I'm going to continue to knit. Uh, like I said, I'm on row five. And um, if you're knitting in the flat, you, your row five is a purl row. My row five is a knit row. So I'm going to knit for a little bit. Okay, I have knitted up to row 17. And I'm now ready to do the row where I attach the legs. So I've verified that I've got my 64 stitches uh, as the pattern calls for. Uh, of course I'm knitting in the round so my row 17 started out with knit 20 stitches rather than purl and so the next 10 stitches is where I actually am attaching my first leg. So I'm going to um, line this up. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen me do this, but we're going to actually do it because I know I have some new people watching that haven't seen some of my other videos. So we're just going to knit these two together uh, just like we would do a, um, you know, three needle bind off, but we're not going to bind them off. We're just going to end up with the stitches here onto my right needle. So I've lined my leg up with my body stitches. Get them down there close to the um, end of your needle. And you've seen me do this on the other video previous, but we're going to do it again here. And we're just going to simply knit those stitches together. I've got that needle in there. I think I'm actually going to use this needle. I don't need to pick up another needle. That will give me one less needle in there. I got what's going on. Okay, so we're going to slip that stitch off of this first needle, slip the first stitch or go into the stitch on the back needle and just pull that through. And now I'm going to slip that those two stitches off of the left needles and now it's over on the right needle. And we're going to do that all the way across here to the leg. And this is where the leg actually gets attached. And um, I honestly don't find it awkward having the leg on here while I knit up the body. Um, you know, the first time maybe you'll feel like it's a little awkward, but then you get up a couple of rows and it really is no big deal. So just keep knitting across, knitting those two stitches together, slip them off, and those stitches now are on the right needle. Keep going across here. Works pretty slick. You do want to um, have good tension on this. You don't want to get loose, sloppy stitches through here. You want to really be very, very aware of your tension. Just because you want that leg to be uh, nice and snug to the body. And 
I will tell you, sometimes I have an extra stitch for whatever reason, just not being careful, uh, in my leg, and I just uh, slip one stitch over um, the next one to if I need to reduce down one stitch in the leg if I have more than what the the ten, and um, it really doesn't ever show. And I didn't even count today, but I think I had the right number. And we're just going to assume. Now, when you get down here to the last stitch, this is where the leg, where our yarn, live yarn was on the leg. Uh, that can get a little bit loose until we secure this to the back. And I actually am going to take that stitch back off for a second. And I'm going to take my little end tail and I'm going to make sure that it is to the back, not the front, and have some nice tension on that. And we'll have to go back in and, and uh, tighten, tighten that up, but we'll do that in another uh, row or two. And, oh, <laughs> I still needed that stitch on that needle because I didn't knit that one yet. Okay, take that back off because I just was moving those stitches around silly okay now we're doing the last stitch of the leg pull that leg tension up on both do that last stitch pull through drop those off make sure my tension's tight now our first leg is all knitted in to the body. You can see the back side, that's where we have the little ridge uh, from the uh, knitting those the two sides of the leg together, but it's up against the body and it never really shows. And the front side is so nice and smooth. So the pattern then says to um, purl four, but for me that's knit four. And here again, I'm making sure my tension is good and snug right here at this intersection where the leg leaves off. So that was one, two, three, four. And now we're ready to knit on the next leg. Now I just have a few stitches on this needle. I'm actually gonna slip them over here onto this next needle so I just um, make life a little easier for my myself which is a quick and easy thing to do I'm just slipping them over here okay so I don't need that needle and I could continue to put them on this needle here now where I knit the leg on but that actually is kind of tight so I'm going to actually um, not use this needle anymore and get my second leg this is where uh, when you do your legs and you've closed up the top you want to make sure you know your your leg is straight your foot's right in front and you have half the stitches on the front and the back don't get it askew but you would have already taken care of that when you closed that leg up on the previous video so we're going to line this leg up with those next stitches get my live stitch this is where again with the flexi flip pull that needle so the cable you're on the cable uh, you can just get a tighter tension get myself another needle here and we're just going to knit that leg right into this next row so pick up the first stitch of the leg and the first stitch there that's in the body take that flexi flip and get it out of the way because I don't need that in front of my face trying to work with this and pull that stitch through slip those stitches off and snug that intersection up really well right there 
making sure then you don't have a gap. Well, I slipped that needle right out of there. Might have had a little too much tension on my yarn here, so where I couldn't get a hold of it and put, pull it through. Okay, that's my second stitch on the second leg, and they're building over here on the right. I will tell you this will feel a little awkward the first time you do it, but it will begin to um, be no big deal after you've done a few of these. And it really secures that leg in there nice and tight. You don't have to worry about sewing it on later. Um, and like I say, for some of you that may work really well and there is <laughs> no reason not to do it that way uh, if that's working for you. And um, I just discovered this works better for me. And um, so I've continued doing it. I used to do these legs, I did them in two rows. I didn't close up the top of the leg. And as I explained in earlier video, um, I find this works just fine closing that leg up and then knitting it into the body. And if you just take your time with it, this goes pretty smooth. Okay, down to that last stitch. Here again, I want to make sure that this tail off of my leg is here in the back. I don't want it out in the front of my work. And we'll go back in with a needle. I'm going to secure those uh, ends down. That's the yarn off of the leg itself. Last stitch. Pull that through and make sure I didn't split my yarn. I didn't slip that stitch off my needle. Okay, the second leg is on there. I'm snugging my tension up and make sure I have the live yarn that I'm supposed to be knitting with and I'm going to continue on and finish up that row. And here again, uh, you just want to keep the tension nice and snug on that intersection of where the last stitch was on your leg to the body. And we just continue to knit on around, finishing up that row. And I'm going to do that with you here. And you always want to make sure you got your legs, you know, <laughs> toes pointing forward. Don't knit your leg on backwards. That would be disastrous, wouldn't it? I got to thinking, I didn't check that. One would definitely be taking that row back off. Okay, almost all the way around. And then I'll we'll take a look at all of this. Okay. All right. We have completed row 17. I've got my stitches on three needles, okay? And uh, I will be putting this tail piece here uh, that came off of the leg on a needle and I'm just going to run it through uh, the pearl bumps on the back side before I go any further. I'll do that with this piece of yarn also uh, securing the tension right there at those intersections and there's your legs onto your body and that's the back side. This is the front side move some of those you can kind of get a better look 
and I will just continue now to knit in the round uh, and I'm going to actually end this video uh, right here so I can get it posted and then I will go on to making video five which will um, I'll knit up to the first uh, decrease in the body. I'm not quite sure what row that is on. Um, oh, it's just it's just in a couple of rows. So, um, I'll but I do want to get this video posted. So, uh, I'm going to end it uh, here. Look and see if there's any other questions that you might have. When I do the securing of the um, end pieces from the legs, I will go ahead and I haven't sewn this up yet. I'll do that now because uh, it's easier access now than when I get the body further up and um, that'll that'll all close up in there nicely this is the little um, where I was knitting back and forth in the flat I do that for a few rows and then go to the round and um, all of this will get tucked in nicely and there are several ways of doing it uh, I could actually pull all of these stitches in so you don't see the cast on at all I don't think that's a big deal quite frankly but um, my goal in sewing it up is I want this bottom to be um, as flat as I can make it so it does help it sit if we get this too rounded then there's no chance of them sitting up at all um, but so I'm my goal what I like to do is to make this as flat as possible so I'll keep that in mind when I close this up and uh, secure these end pieces and continue on knitting so I hope you're enjoying this it's been kind of fun um, I think I got off screen there just a little bit. I hope not too much. So there you go. Uh, we're making progress here. And um, I'll be back on a new video um, in another day. Bye now.